last week we did a tree class where our instance variables were up here along the top. And these were our objects that we created. And we just uh, kind of pseudocoded those out in, uh, on a slide in PowerPoint just so you could get an idea of what was going on. So today I'm going to show you how to create those in Eclipse. So I'm going to flip over and share my Eclipse screen. All right, so let's create this class in Eclipse. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new class file. So I like to, um, well, today I'm going to right click on source and go to new down to class and I'm going to name this class tree. Remember that our objects are capitalized. Our last name is only going to go in the files that have the main method in them. If you'll recall that our plain old Java objects have four basic components. One, they have to have a public class. There we go. Two, they have to have private instance variables. We're going to add those in. And they have to have a default no arg constructor. So that lets us create blank empty objects. I'm going to show you how to do that. And they need to have any kind of helper methods or anything along, um, along those lines so that we can work with the class. So the first thing we're going to do is put in, we have to, excuse me, I forgot one, we have to have getters and setters as well, public getters and setters, so that we can access what's inside the instance variable and we can set what's inside the instance variable. So let's begin with creating our instance variable. So we just type in our access modifier private, our data type, and then our variable name. And I'm going to do that for all of my instance variables. With our instance variables, we need to make sure that they are in camel casing. Again, this is more important whenever you get into Java 2 because a lot of our frameworks will expect and set up our getters and setters for us automatically, but it has to be in this correct camel casing in order to handle the creation of the getters and setters. But you know what, actually, just hold on. I want to add this one later, okay? I want to show you how you, can, how you can always go and modify this. So the first thing I need to do is type out all my instance variables. Uh, with private access modifiers, their data type, and then their name of the instance variables using camel casing. After I've done that, I can use Eclipse to generate my constructors and my getters and setters and my two strings for me. So I like to tell people that you can create classes as quickly as you can type in the instance variables, because from here on out, Eclipse is going to do the rest of it for us. So let's generate those getters and setters first. To generate getters and setters, you go up to source, and down to getters and setters. So to generate our getters and setters, we're going to source, down to generate getters and setters. It will pop open a box. This box gives us an option to put check marks next to all the getters and setters that we want to generate to help us with our class. Um, usually our insertion point is after the last instance variable which is, uh, in this case, this is where my cursor was, but you can always change that. And usually you generate them in pairs so that your getter and your setters are right next to each other for the same instance variable. The default here is fine, public. Um, what, I, what you don't really need is you don't need to generate method comments for getters and setters. So if that option is turned on, you can turn it off. If it's turned on and you forget, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but there's really no reason to generate method comments for getters and setters because everybody pretty much knows the action and the roles of getters and setters. I'm going to go ahead and generate this. And this is going to pop in 10, yeah, 10 methods for us. So here's my getter for name and here's my setter for name. Same thing with bark, get bark, set bark, get leaves, set leaves, get leaf size. So this is what I was talking about with our camel casing. We have to make sure that our lowercase, our first letter is lowercase because this is going to automatically uppercase the getter and the setter. And the, um, the frameworks are coded to look for these uh, particular conventions. So that's why it's important that we follow them. And then we have uh, is fruit and set fruit. Okay, so there's my instance variable. So the reason I left out the last one is if you accidentally forget one, you can go ahead and add in your other instance variable and you can add it in afterwards. I want it at the bottom in the pair. 
So there's zone now. So if you forget one, if you delete one, um, we'll delete zone since I just put it in there. And see if there's air here, and I can just take them out again. Okay. Keep those in there though. All right, so there's my getters and setters. So instead of typing out 12 variable, or excuse me, 12 methods, all you do is just use Eclipse to generate those. Pretty slick. Okay, so we can also use Eclipse to generate our constructors. So we need a default no argument constructor, and we will need some helper constructors too to make working with our class a little bit easier. Right now, I have a default no argument constructor. I have an implicit one, meaning that even though I have not declared and created one, I have one in the class in and of itself. Let me show you how that works before we move on and generate these. I'm going to create a tree tester class. I'll put a file or right click new on the class. I'm going to create a tree tester. And this one was going to have my last name on it because it's going to have the main method. I have a tree, a default, no argument constructor. I'm going to call it A. And I'm not doing anything with it yet, but I can create an object off of this guy based on what, based on the default no argument constructor. So if I did like a sysout a dot get name, should see a null. There we go. Because I haven't, I haven't assigned any of the instance variables yet. So that is what I mean whenever I say there is an implicit default no argument constructor inside of this tree class, even though we haven't created one. But check this out. Let's create a constructor that takes all the instance variables to begin with. So to do this, I like to put my cursor right after the instance variables because the uh, way a class is set up in Java is you have instance variables, you have the constructors, you have the getters and setters, and then at the bottom of the class, you have all the helper methods. I'm going to create a constructor that takes in all of these fields. So I'm going to go down to source, generate constructor using fields. And I can put a check mark next to all the fields that I want, where I want it inserted. I'm going to take this one because it has all the instance variables. I can pass each of them in. And then I will generate that. Oops, forgot to uncheck that comment. So here is my constructor that takes in all the names of the variables and sets them. Now notice this, as soon as I put in this constructor, it overwrote the default no argument constructor. So if I go over to my tree tester now, I have an error because this one is using the default no argument and I no longer have a constructor that matches that. So I can either add the arguments, I can change the constructor or I can create a constructor called tree with default no r. Let's go ahead and let's add that other constructor in there. So once you put in one constructor, it overwrites what the default no argument constructor. So we do still need, now we have to explicitly put the default no argument constructor in there. So again, I'm putting my cursor between the last instance variable and the constructor that takes in all the parameters. I'm gonna go to source, down to generate constructors from superclass. And this will let me generate this default no argument constructor. I just default, um, we will talk more about the object superclass whenever we get into overriding, or excuse me, whenever we get into inheritance. But just for now, understand that the object is the super superclass of all Java objects. So that's why um, it is making a call to the super constructor. My insertion point is good, it's after zone, that's where I have my cursor. I do not want to generate constructor comments. And there we go. So now I have a default no argument constructor. After I save this, notice how the error in my tree tester went away. So I said, okay, this is good now. I can, I can, uh, I can live with this. I'm going to show you how to add in another constructor that maybe doesn't take in all of the instance variables. A nice helper constructor. I'm going to put it um, between my one that takes none and my one that takes everything. So I'll go up to source, 
generate constructor using fields. And I'm just going to have it take a name. There we go. And there it is. There's my other constructor. So you can see you can have as many as you want or need. But like with overloading methods, you have to make sure that your parameters order and or type are different. So I would not be able to create a, a constructor that takes in leaves because I already have this string parameter here. So I'd only be able to use one string parameter. In this case, it means I'm using name. All right, before we navigate off of this and start playing around with these instance variables, I want to create a helper method called the two string so that we can quickly see what is being set inside of these instance variables. To generate our two string, go up to source, down to generate two string. One thing I forgot to do is click where I wanted to go. I wanted to go at the very end. And my two string is just going to list what's at inside of each of these instance variables here. So everything is checked by default. And I don't know why it's got that option checked. Then maybe I check something by default on one of them. Now at the end, yeah, this is what it should look like. Here is my two string. It's the name of my object, and then it gives the, a title for the instance variable, and then the value inside the instance variable. So here again, my title, and then my actual value that's inside of that variable. So let's look at it in our tree tester. Oh, I gotta save this first. There we go. And instead of sussing out a.get name, let's do it a.toString. So let me see what's inside of there. So there you can see. I've got nothing set in my instance variables. Now, if I change this, let's set a, let's set a name. Now you'll see that my instance variable is set for small to Packberry. And I can also use some of my other, other setters to set the other instance variables. So I've got bark and I've got name. Filled in. Also set the leaves. There we go. Got my leaves in there. Got leaf size. See everything kind of going in. And then last, my zone. We got this get name. There we go. So it has taken me one two, three, four, five, six, seven lines to set all these instance variables. This is where those constructors will really come in handy. So let's create another tree. And this time, let's use our other constructor to set a as we create the object. Can you see how Eclipse is trying to help me out? It's like, okay, now you're on int leaf size. Watch after I put in the leaf size, put in that comma, Look how it popped me over to the next one so that I knew which one I was on. There's my zone. Now I there's my red oak. Capitalize the other one. I feel as though I should capitalize that one. <laughs> there we go. So now look how much space I I have managed to declare and initialize all of those instance variables in one line. Pretty nice. Really convenient. Let's look at our last one. You can see on this one, I'll just set the name. So I'll just use my name, which is English Walnut. Let's use my, uh, excuse me, my name constructor. And now you'll see that this sets just the name variable. There's the name, and then the rest of it's all to default. Pretty cool. Of course, I can create some other methods, too. And I need a print, very, a print method that is going to return um, a string along the lines of um, this.name as, there we go. So all my helper methods are going to go down here at the end. I should have used one that I put a bark in there for. 
Moist walnut has smooth blade spark. So here is my tree class, my private instance variables, my default NOAR constructor, my non-default constructors that help me use the class, my getters and setters, and then any helper methods I have. So I have two, I have one for the two string, and I have one called print that returns it in a nice format, looking, looking nice. Let's do one more example. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to rename this. I want to keep them separate. There we go. And now I'm going to create one more class. This one I'm going to call it podcast. Okay, if we were going to create a podcast class, what kind of fields might we have? Yeah, there we go. So there's some ideas. So you see, to create the instance variables, I had to first think about what all I needed in instance variables. So title, host, topic, link. I'm sure there's a lot of other ones that we could probably think of, genre, something like that as well. Let's just work with these four. Uh, yep, okay. And first things first, after we type in our instance variables, going to source, generate getters and setters. There they are. Next thing I need is a default no argument constructor. Source generate constructors from superclass. There we go. And then let's do a non default that takes in all, all the fields. There they all are, all four of them selected after a default no arg. There it is. Perfect. And now let's go down here and create a two string. Perfect. So there is my podcast class. Let's say that I decided I need to add one more field. Um, in addition to title, let's say um, I'm going to have a Boolean called um, premium. And for premium content, you have to pay. If you have everything generated, the best bet is to delete what you have and regenerate as needed instead of trying to fill in the holes of what you have. I spent a lot of time messing around with the stuff and I find it's just quicker just to delete and recreate than trying to get it all to <laughs> work out. There we go. Okay, let's create a podcast tester. New class, generate our main method. Then it says my main method, so I'm going to have my last name on it. So there's my default no argument podcast that sets no values. There it is. And then let's create another one. There we go. Put everything filled in there. Did I go look back? I only made two constructors if I remember right. Yep, one that takes in all, oh, and then just my default. Cool. How quickly do you think you can create a class now? 